Muhammad Bakir was asked, What do you say about one who goes to the ziyarat of your grandfather, Imam Hussein, during tense times? Imam Bakir replied, On the day of great terror, judgment day, Allah will keep him safe and the angels will welcome him. They will give glad tidings saying, Don't be afraid or saddened. This is the day of your success. Yazid, the tyrant and oppressive ruler of his age, needed the allegiance of Imam Hussein to legitimize himself as the leader of the Islamic Empire. Hussein refused, and this is the reason why he is known as the one who said no. Having seen the injustices against the religion of his grandfather, Imam Hussein rose up to save Islam. He set upon traveling with his family and 72 companions to Kufa, where he was offered support only to be betrayed and abandoned. Before Hussein even reached Kufa, he was cornered in a desert land called Karbala. The Imam and his family were surrounded by enemy forces, an army consisting of 30,000 sent by Yazid with the intention of bringing back the head of Imam Hussein. Hussein's loyal friends and family stuck by him and for three days in their camps they were refused water. The Euphrates River was in front of them, yet the army were guarding it and would not let anyone come near to drink from it. The battle began on the third day. Hussein's companions going out in defense of Islam one by one, martyred and beheaded. Imam Hussein's oldest son, Ali Akbar, was the first one of his family to walk out onto the battlefield. Braving his thirst, he fought the onslaught of enemy soldiers alone before he was attacked by spears from all sides and dragged across the ground by the horses. He lay on the sands of Karbala crying out his father's name as he died. When Imam Hussein came to him, he placed his cheek on the cheek of his son, Ali Akbar. Hussein had already placed his cheek on another martyr's that day, that of his African companion, and in mourning for and paying respect to his oldest son in the same way as his African companion, he showed that all that truly mattered was one soul, not his name homeland or skin color. Imam Hussein's half-brother Abbas, whose father was Imam Ali, general of his army. Imam did not want him to go to fight as he felt Abbas was his backbone. Imam Hussein's daughter kept asking for water and Abbas could not take this. He promised her he would bring back water and with the permission of Imam Hussein, he set off on his horse. He possessed his father's bravery and skill. The enemies fled from him as he approached the river. He was the only one from the Imam's army to reach the river. As he picked up the water to drink, he paused and then threw the water back into the river. He could not drink the water whilst his niece, his brother, his loved ones were thirsty. He bottled that water and got onto the horse to go back to the camp. On his way back, the enemy stood in his way once more, this time hiding in the trees and shooting arrows from afar. As he gallantly fought them off, one of the soldiers cut off one of his arms. This did not stop Abbas from carrying on his mission to bring the water back to his camp and he still had the water with him, so he carried on riding. An enemy cut off his other arm, yet Abbas kept going. An arrow pierced his eye and a rock thrown at his head which made him fall face first to the ground. Finally, the water bottle was pierced with an arrow and that was when Abbas lost hope. Lying there on the floor, bloodied and armless, he shouted for his brother, Imam Hussein came riding ferociously. Abbas would not accept his head be on the lap of Imam Hussein because he envisioned there would be no one to hold Imam Hussein when he is martyred. 
Abbas had one last noble request before he passed away, not to take his body back to the camp because he was ashamed to show himself to the children without bringing back water. Even infants were not spared. Imam Hossein took his six-month-old child to the army and requested some water for the baby. As a response to the Imam's request, one of the enemy archers shot an arrow which pierced the baby's neck in the arms of Imam Hossein. Imagine what Hossein went through. A day his family and friends were massacred, yet he continued for the sake of God. Imam was the last person to go to battle and as expected, fought with courage and bravery, but eventually even this great warrior was overpowered by the enemy numbers. His body was full of arrows, his chest smashed, bleeding from every angle. His head was cut off and stuck onto a spear as the horses trampled on the body that was kissed and hugged by the last messenger of Allah. The enemies of Islam now targeted the camps, setting them on fire and causing chaos. They took the women and children, among them Hossein's sister, Zainab, and tied them up to drag them to Kufa and eventually to Syria, to Yazid's palace, leaving Imam Hossein's body under the burning sun, unburied for three days. A well-known phrase is every day is Ashura, every land is Karbala. But the truth is even deeper than this, as in reality, every second is Ashura. Our lives are split in two at all times between truth and falsehood. Since the time of our forefathers till now, this has always been the case. Ashura was the perfect example of truth against falsehood. Imam Hussein knew that soon he and his family would be deprived of water, but that did not stop him from offering water to the enemy soldiers when they were low in number and thirsty. Despite the state of war and under constant attack, Imam Hussein and his army still performed their prey on time. With a few of his companions sacrificing themselves as human shields, so that the rest of the army could complete their prey to the only one true God. We look to the symbol of truth and purity on the side of Imam Hussein, his baby and youngest martyr of the battle, Ali Asghar, to show us that heroes are not bound by age. We look to the way Lady Zainab sends her salutations to Habib, son of Mutahir, one of the Imam's senior companions, who cries as he feels undeserving of her salutations. We look to how Abbas and to Habib, son of Mutahir, cannot reach an agreement on who goes onto the battlefield first, both wishing to begin the battle and protect the other. We look to how everyone cares for the other more than their self. We look to the selflessness of Karbala. Then we look at Yazid's army who have allowed their desire and love of this world to reign over them. When Imam Hussein kept warning them not to commit the massacre they intended, Shimra, the man who would behead Imam Hussein, replied, We don't know what you're saying. To which one of Imam Hussein's companions, the hare, son of Cain, said, Yes, you do. You are merely blinded, Shimra, had contaminated his heart so deeply that evil had become a part of him. The veil in front of his eyes was too strong for him to witness the light. In the words of the Holy Quran, the side of evil is indeed deaf, dumb and blind. It is a symbol to show us the vast potential of evil that the human being is capable of, but at the same time, Imam Hussein stands defiant in front of this evil to show us the enormous potential of humanity and honor that the human being is capable of. When Imam Hussein and the events of Ashura are contemplated upon, 
It provides the followers of this message of humanity with the motivation to persist through all their hardships, despite whatever position they are in. It teaches one to release themselves from their ego for the betterment of humankind and the meaning of sacrifice for love. Indeed, Karbala is the school of love. A life is based on one's intentions and so in everything one does, in the conflicts of one's mind, in one's actions and in one's conversations, even in one's sleep and in one's walk. Every second you are given the choice of Karbala to be with Hossein or to be with Yazid. Among those who were taken to Syria in the aftermath of Karbala was Imam Hossein's son, Ali Sajjad, who became the fourth Imam. He was the only surviving man left from the battle of Karbala and lived on. From his lineage came the rest of the Imams and the final one, Imam Mahadi, who the world is waiting for till this day. There was a day when a man came up to the fourth Imam and asked him who was victorious in Karbala. Was it Hussein, the dead, thirsty, slaughtered one? Or was it Yazid, the one who claimed the throne? Imam Sajjad answered, When you hear the Adhan, you will know the victorious one. When in the Adhan you hear, Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulallah, you will know who was victorious.